Over four and a half million people use City Airport every year. And at Londonist, we're heading behind the scenes, pulling back the curtain to find out what it takes to keep everything moving. We'll follow your bags after you hand them over to those lovely people at check-in. TVs. People buy TVs and ship them home. Yeah. We'll get a marshalling lesson from Danny in ramp services in case you've ever wanted to park a plane. That's to bring the aircraft forward. <laughs> and hunt down the culprit who accidentally triggers an airport-wide alarm, which we're told definitely wasn't put on for the cameras. And we'd hope so after seeing some of these faces. Not happy. Right now we are walking along what we call the East Pier, which is um, four aircraft stands uh, on the eastern side of the terminal, and we're going to head to the outbound bags team okay. um, to find out what uh, what happens to your hold luggage when you arrive as a passenger. So what happens after your bags disappear behind that rubber, flappy, dangly curtain thing? That definitely can't be the right name for it. This is start back from here. So behind there behind is, there is, is check what? In, check in desk. Okay. The, the girls walk behind there to check in desk. Yeah. And from that point they come to us through the fire door, come along here. And we have two machines, one and two. So eight bikes goes to the right and eight bikes go to the left. So he's getting scanned, has he been x-rayed by this, this point? This x-ray machine is here. Okay. And this is the x-ray machine here. Yeah. And, and so where does he go off to after this bit? It goes up here and make a left. Yep. Come all the way around the belt. Now this is quite small compared to most airports, right? Yes. It's easy for us because you have everything come together. All the bikes come on one belt. See, it's not how big it is. It's what you do with it that counts. And so, tell me about some of the uh, the more random stuff that comes through here. Because uh, someone was telling me that you've had lots of random things that come yes, through. Yes, we have live animal come through, dog, cat, bikes, big box TVs. People buy TVs and ship them home? Yeah. Okay. We went to Lagos. TVs uh, to Lagos? Yeah. Is there a big market for TVs in the Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> With 18,000 items going through outbound bags every week, woe betide you if you put someone's expensive rubber knickers on the wrong flight. And to make sure you and your rubber knickers get to the same destination, barcodes. Oh, and TV game show sound effects. And if you put a wrong bag, like on this one here, scan this. It says no because we're going to Glasgow. So just around the corner from baggage are ramp services. Now these are the people who load, unload, and give the plane some love when it's on the stand. But they don't empty the loose. Well, Danny doesn't. That's what he told me. And tell me about the guy with the paddles. It does the, uh, is it the semaphore? The guy who's got the plane in with the paddles and tells him to stop. The marshalling. That's the one, yeah. So do you know what the signs mean? The signs? Yeah. yeah. Then they do like, so what's what and what's, what's So what's what? the signs to bring it forward, that's to bring the aircraft forward. Once we get to the turning point, which normally it's situated on the lines, once you get to the turning point, you then lift the right arm, depending on what direction you're going. You, you then pass it over to the corner marshal once the corner marshal is there, and then he brings it back himself and then lines it. Once he's happy with it, he then puts a cross sign which stops the aircraft. Handbrake set, once it's set, you are safe to put shocks in. Your crew are loving it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm just going to turn this off because it's a so bit. Tell me what you're hearing. What, what, you, what yeah, are you so, telling you you're in? So it's a ramp control. They're letting us know what, what stands and what aircraft are going to go on what stand. They're just giving you enough time to set the stand up and tell you how much baggage weight is on the aircraft so you can, you can delegate your staff and how many guys you will need on that aircraft. We've got about 50 voices. I know on you're one doing radio. Countdowns like it's television, like you 
10 minutes. Literally, yeah, it was 20 miles, 10 miles. Uh, it, it could be short finals, long finals, and yeah, it, it's, it's a fast, it's a reactive airport, very quick. So we're due to head out onto the runway with airfield operations in about 40 minutes time. So we decide this is a good time to get a bite to eat. Then just as we're stuffing that big tasty wrap right in our faces. Attention, attention. Attention, attention, there is a fire in the building. So here's the deal, if you are airside, as in you've gone through security, you've hoped for a pat down but didn't get one, you make your way out onto the apron, basically where the planes park up. And if you haven't made it through, but are still hoping for an intimate cavity search, you're evacuated to the front of the terminal. In all seriousness, because the alarm has been triggered, we are canning filming for the day. Andrew, who I was with, has actually had to go on and do his uh, PR stuff. Uh, loads of people have been tweeting about the fact they've been on the runway. Well, not on the runway, on the apron. We need to get it right. It's very important. And, uh, and so what we're going to do is he has said to me, can we pick this up next week? Next time we race a plane down the runway, point at some screens in the tower. Nice finger. And dish the dirt on the future plans for the airport and Sean Berry of the Green Party ain't gonna like it.